How's it going everyone, it is Panjano here and in today's video we're going to be showing you guys how to achieve the best FPS possible on Vampire the Masquerade Blood Hunt. In this video we're going to be going through all the in-game settings, tweaks and optimizations in which you can set to achieve the best gameplay experience possible, to ensure you are getting the lowest amount of input latency, reducing any lag or micro stuttering you may be experiencing, alongside producing the best FPS possible for your machine, whether that be an ultra old low end laptop, all the way up to the latest and greatest in gaming hardware, this video is going to be helping you achieve the best FPS possible at all times. If you do enjoyed this video and are happy with your results, please do remember to leave a like as it does help me out tremendously. Alongside let me know of your results, questions, queries or suggestions for other content you'd like to see come to the channel in the comment section down below. To kick off the optimizations, we're first of all going to be navigating into Steam. Once inside of Steam, navigate to the top left hand side to Steam, then down to Settings. You want to navigate down to Library and ensure that Low Bandwidth Mode, Low Performance Mode, Disable Community Content have all been enabled. This will be able to reduce some of that overhead that Steam is using in the background, soaking up resources just to make Steam a little bit more lightweight. Once that's been done, go ahead and press OK. We're then going to navigate on the left hand side and find Blood Hunt, right click on the game, navigate down to Properties. We're first of all going to be installing some custom launch options for the game and which you can find in the description down below. Highlight all the way from the right hand side all the way to the left, right click then select Copy. Navigate to the Launch Options menu within inside of Steam, right click in this box, select Paste. Once that's done we can then go ahead and ensure that Use Desktop Theatre Mode has been disabled. We can then navigate over to the left hand side to Local Files, then select Browse Local File. We're first of all going to be navigating down to the Tiger application right clicking and selecting properties. Navigating over to compatibility, ensuring that disable full screen optimizations has been selected, then going down to change high DPI settings and overriding the high DPI behavior at the bottom, selecting OK, apply and OK. We're going to be applying the optimization one more time to another application inside of here. So we're going to go inside of the Tiger folder, binaries, Win64, scrolling down to the Tiger Win64 shipping application, right clicking, compatibility, disable full screen, change high DPI, override, OK, apply and OK. That's simply going to be removing the inbuilt Windows 10 full screen optimizations which actually harm performance. And for some quick and easy Windows settings in which you should have applied for every single game you're playing, not just Blood Hunt, navigate to the bottom left hand side, type in game space mode, click on game mode settings, ensure that Windows game mode has been switched to the on position, as some of the latest updates to Windows 10 has meant that practically every single game will see a slight performance improvement when having Windows game mode turned on. Additionally, if you do not use the Xbox game bar, I'd recommend clicking on this and turning off the game bar if you don't currently use this. Continuing on with the Windows optimizations, navigate to the bottom left hand side once again, this time typing in GPU space settings, clicking on the graphics settings tab, and if you do have the option available to you for hardware accelerated GPU scheduling, it is definitely recommended to ensure that this is turned to the on position. For every single person watching this video, we're going to be navigating down to the graphics performance preference tab. Now before we go inside of here, quickly minimize this section, go back with inside of Steam, right click on Blood Hunt, Properties, Local Files, Browse. Once you've done this and got back inside of the game installation directory, go up to the navigation bar at the top, double click so you get the full directory available to you, right click then select copy. We can then go ahead and exit out. Navigate back down to the settings menu to the graphics settings tab, this time navigating down to browse. Head on over to the navigation bar at the top, double click, remove this PC, then simply go ahead right click, select paste, then enter. Once inside of it, go inside of the Tiger folder, binaries, Win64, and we're going to add the Tiger Win64 shipping application by selecting add, navigating down to options, and selecting high performance, and exit out. Now before we jump into the game to tweak and finalize all of our in-game settings, and like any other game you wish to play, it is 100% recommended to ensure that you are closing out of any applications, game launchers, web browsers, and other apps running in the background of your PC that you do not need open whilst playing. Every single application you have on your PC running that doesn't need to be running is taking up CPU cycles and resources. Just navigate to the bottom right, select the task icon tray, and start closing out of applications and game launches which you do not need open. We can then go ahead and jump into Steam, boot the game, and go through all of our in-game settings. Once you boot into the game, get yourself into an area where you can see other characters, and you aren't just looking directly at a wall, so we can get a decent basis of what our FPS is like. As you can see for me, I'm currently getting 60, and this is because the game is defaultly capped. So to start with the in-game settings, go ahead and press escape, navigate to the top right-hand side, click on the settings cog. To start off with inside of the basic mode, Mode, you want to ensure that you are running on full screen mode only, regardless of the specs of your system. For resolution, I would recommend setting this to the maximum resolution, as we can use other techniques later on to get better FPS. So set this to your max res. For frame rate limit, are serious about getting the lowest level of input latency possible at all times and the highest FPS, go ahead and select unlimited. Frame smoothing is going to be disabled. Brightness is personal preference, turn this as high or as low as you wish to have it. At this current moment, DX12 seems to be bugged on the game on every single system I've tried, so I'm not going to recommend using this at the moment, but do check the description down below if there have been any updates to using this, otherwise just leave this off. 
Resolution scale is also going to be set to 100% and we're going to be leaving AMD FSR 1.0 to off for now as we're going to be coming back to this setting at the end of the video as AMD FSR is one of the most important settings with inside of this game for achieving the best performance possible. Go back with inside of the game and as you can now see we're getting about 86 to 90 frames per second. Navigating to the advanced section this time, first of all starting off with view distance. For low end systems I would recommend using medium here, for high end systems go with high. The reason we're going to be keeping this setting high is it will keep more of the map rendered in in the distance, stopping drastic stuttering and lag spike issues. I'm going to be going with medium. Material quality is going to be set to low. Texture quality is going to be set to match your system specs. So if you have a low end system, go with low. Medium end system, go with medium. And high end system, go with high. Texture filtering is recommended to have this set down to trilinear. Effects are going to be turned to low. Foliage quality is going to be switched to off. Lighting quality is going to be switched to low. Volumetric fog quality is going to be switched to off for the best performance possible. Ambient occlusion can be set to medium if you do want a more softer, natural looking image which will look more visually pleasing, but for the best competitive advantage and FPS, go with off. Screen space reflections are going to be switched to off. If you need every single frame possible and you're running on a low end machine and every single frame matters, go with shadows off. But I would actually personally recommend switching shadows at a minimum to low. You will see a slight FPS decrease from this, but shadows in this game can be quite important for spotting enemies around corners. For instance, if I turn shadows off here and apply these settings, go into the game, you can see there are no shadows being cast from either of these players. Turn shadows to low. As you can now see, shadows are now being cast from all of the enemy players. Anti-aliasing quality is recommended to actually have switched off as AMD FSR will affect this later on, so for the best FPS possible, go with off. Subsurface scattering is going to be recommended to have switched off for the best performance, alongside motion blur, chromatic aberration is going to be unselected, film grain unselected, bloom is going to be switched to off, lens flares off, and if you want a nicer looking game you can keep light shafts on but for the best competitive advantage possible, alongside FPS, go with off. So the in-game settings should look somewhat similar as follows, obviously you may have a few of them changed depending on the specs of your system, once those have been set, select apply once again, select confirm. As you can see I'm getting anywhere from 105 to 113 frames per second. Jump into the settings menu, go over to basic and we're going to be navigating down to AMD FSR. We're first of all going to try setting this to ultra quality regardless of how good or bad your system is, select apply. Once you boot back with inside of the game, you may notice a slight visual difference as this is actually going to be upscaling a lower resolution, but you will see that your performance has drastically improved. Now, depending on how low you want to go with AMD FSR is really gonna come down to your personal preference and the screen resolution which you're currently running on. For those of you running at 4K or 1440p, running on the lower settings of AMD FSR will look less noticeable compared to those of you running on 1080p or lower. Jump in, we can go over to ultra quality, set this down to quality, apply that setting, go back with inside of the game, and as you can see, we've got an extra five frames or so from going down to ultra quality. You can continue to go down lower and lower and lower until you find your personal preference of performance and visual fidelity. And as you can see now, this laptop has a 120 hertz monitor refresh rate and we basically are never dropping below this. For the smoothest experience possible, I would also recommend now capping your FPS to match your monitor's refresh rate or a multiple of the monitor's refresh rate. If you are going to cap your in-game FPS, it is recommended not to use the frame rate limit option within inside of the in-game settings as this will cause inconsistent frame pacing and leave you with a less smooth feeling game, as shown in my frame time graph in the left hand side. The smoother that line, the smoother the game is. As you can see by quickly and easily tabbing out and using my RTSS program to cap my in-game FPS to 120, going back inside of the game, as you can see, it's providing incredibly smooth frame pacing, allowing for a fantastic smooth gameplay experience. If you are wondering where you can get Rebatuna Statistics Server from to cap your in-game FPS, use the link in the description down below, you'll be brought to this webpage found here. Once inside of the webpage, continue to scroll all the way down towards the bottom, select one of the download servers. Once it's finished downloading, open up the zip file, navigate over to the RTSS setup, double click, select run, select OK to your language, then select yes, next, accept the terms, next, next, install. Once the program is finished installing, navigate to the bottom left hand side, search for Reva Tuner, open up the Reva Tuner statistics server, then navigate to the bottom right hand side to your task icon tray, click on the blue monitor. To cap your in-game FPS, navigate over to global on the left hand side, then go over to the frame rate limit box, and I would recommend capping your FPS exactly to your monitor's refresh rate. So if you're on a 120 hertz monitor, go with 120, 144, go with 144, and if it's higher, go higher. For this laptop, it's a 120 hertz monitor, select enter, go back with the of the game and you should then be able to see your in-game FPS cap has been successfully set. Additionally, for a further FPS boost for those of you running on a laptop, regardless of how good or bad the laptop is, it is recommended to actually hook the laptop up to an external display via HDMI. Once the external display has then been connected, simply fold down the laptop screen so the laptop screen is no longer being powered. This will then disable the Optimus technology, which will then provide you with slightly better performance when running on an external display. 
And there you guys have it. That is the ultimate FPS increase guide for Vampire Blood Hunt. If you have enjoyed this video, please leave a like as it does help me out tremendously. And if you do enjoy this sort of content, please do consider pressing that subscription button alongside the bell notification to be notified instantly whenever new content goes live on the channel. Thank you ever so much for taking the time to watch this video. I'm Pangino and I'll see you in the next one.